What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again, once again. So in the inaugural issue of the Warmind comic, I was kinda stoked, like really stoked to see where this was going. It had some great lore references, introduced a mystery, I mean like, why are these frames here? Why is there a city hawk frozen in the ice? When could Rasputin have possibly had the power, post collapse, to freeze a hive god? You know, plotting cons- I mean, mysteries like that. Then of course, Warmind came out, the DLC, not the comic. And in the course of Warmind being out, we would learn things like, hey, yeah, no, um, Zul and Nocris were actually frozen in ice during the Golden Age, apparently, maybe, kinda, sort of. But this frozen Hive Prince and Hive God, with their Hive Army, had absolutely, positively, nothing to do with the collapse. <sighs> Talk about wanting to have your cake and eat it. Hey, we want this ancient hive army on Mars that's been there since the Golden Age. Oh yeah, but wait, they had nothing to do with the collapse. Even though... <sighs> Why would a hive god and a hive prince not attack the traveler if they found it? That is literally the hive's modus operandi. That is, that is literally the entire point of their species. Not to mention what the worm gods gave the hive the worms to do. But I digress, because I am getting way off point. One of the large plot inconsistencies in Warmine, among many, as I've just pointed out, in its hastily rushed out the door plot, that apparently took an entire year to write, is the seemingly Jesus-esque resurrection of Mary Suchan, also known as Anna Bray. Thought dead by everyone, even the future war cult, who literally has a time machine that can see into the future, and you'd think, maybe, just maybe, the future war cult, the people with the time machine that can predict and see into the future, maybe, just maybe, they would see Anna Bray helping us kill a worm god on Mars, but eh, eh, fuck it, speed of plot and all. And I bring that up because it's the future war cult in Destiny 1 that tells us she's dead. So it seems like one of the goals of the Warmind comic is to try and tell us how Anna, seemingly dead Bray, isn't so dead anymore. Because heaven knows, in a plot that is so epic it took a year to write for five missions, they couldn't be bothered to tell us in-game. At all. Even remotely, or slightly, or... <sighs> I'm never getting over that, by the way. Anyways, spoiler alert, Anna, seemingly dead Bray, faked her death at the Battle of Twilight Gap. You know what? If I thought I wasn't getting over the fact that it took someone a year to write the plot for Warmind, I think the sheer stupidity of Anna Bray faking her death at the Battle of Twilight Gap is probably right up there with stupidity that has come out of the Destiny franchise. Anna Bray, one of the most legendary hunters in the history of the Destiny universe, faked her death and deserted her comrades in arms during the Battle of Twilight fucking Gap? One of the most monumentous events in the history of the city? Where the city came a hair's breadth away from utter annihilation? But fuck it, ha, <laughs> you know, it's time for one of the most legendary hunters that has ever existed to desert her city, her friends, and uh, maybe even humanity during one of its darkest moments. So she could go find Rasputin because Zephala said no and Zephala is such a meanie! And hunters wonder why none of the other classes seem to like them. Hmm. It's because they can't be trusted as far as you can throw them. <sighs> but that is me getting quite a bit ahead of myself. Issue 2 opens up where issue 1 kind of left off. See, in issue 1, Anna had somehow survived with no light, the impact of a war sat close enough to grab her by the cape and drag her down under the ice. Now, 
you don't have to have a degree in physics to know that she would have been fucking atomized. But hey, fucking details. In issue two, we open with her passed out, drowned, in the middle of a flashback. Well, in the middle of starting a flashback. The flashback to the death of her lover Cameron. This entirely unnecessary character death is brought to you by a poorly written plot, and is used as justification to push Anna even further to find Rasputin for the memory of her lost love. And I'm gonna be completely and utterly honest here, the Cameron subplot is unnecessary, and it's just there to fill pages. And it is unnecessary, and I'm not just saying that. I mean, think about it. Cameron's entire role in issue two is to die, to push Anna even further into finding Rasputin, a motivation that she already had because she's Anna Bray and the Brays are her family and she created Rasputin in a past life, so she already has motivations, but no, we have to kill this character to give her even more motivations. We're gonna double motivate her to do something that at this point she had already faked her death to do. And yes, I know that Cameron isn't dead, but in the context of issue two, issue two treats her like she's dead and gone. Like there's no coming back from it. In fact, they kind of make a point to kill her twice. Once in the flashback, and then again they kill this device that Anna had that had a bunch of recordings of Cameron. And even if we bring issue 3 into it, which I'll lightly touch on but we will get to later, I still struggle to find a point for the Cameron subplot. It's not like she has an active role in Destiny 2, and I don't think Anna actually ever mentions her even. So, while it's nice to see that Anna has this relationship, and it's cool, it's charming, I just don't see the point of wasting so much time exploring it when there's so many other things that could be explored in these comics that don't get explored. And I guess this kind of goes back to my complaint of Destiny 2 in general, where it's moved away from these really big concepts about the horror of the universe and these really big esoteric ideas to interpersonal relationships that I couldn't give two shits or a fuck about. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't involve my character, so why do I care? But back on plot. So all that really happens in issue two is Anna, I somehow wasn't atomized by a war set falling from orbit right next to me, Bray, nearly dies, saves herself, walks back to her base camp, nearly dies again, and then through sheer, we're not even trying anymore, deus ex bullshit, she taps, back into the power of the light to escape death again. We'll get to the timeline in a moment, but can we talk about how trying to kill a character multiple times when that character is clearly a vendor in your DLC in the prequel comic does absolutely nothing. There's no tension. There's no stakes. You're fucking stupid for trying it. This is literally like trying to go to Caesar's Palace with Monopoly money. That check isn't gonna cash. Now, if we get to the timeline, because I've seen people say, well, maybe this was after Destiny 2. In issue one, Anna Bray loses her light after the attack of the Red Legion during Destiny 2. In the span of issue one and two, she takes off from base camp, nearly dies, goes back to base camp, sets out, nearly dies again. Then she goes back to base camp and for good measure, nearly dies again. Even for the sake of argument, if we say three or four days have passed between her losing her powers and this moment, it takes us a week just to travel the Twilight Gap after the city falls. So yeah, this is fucking bullshit. So Anna, deus ex bullshit Sue, taps into the power of the light and doesn't die. And then she also magically just finds Rasputin. Issue two is vapid and pointless. Issue 2 just finds new ways to piss me off with every page. In large part, because it does waste a lot of time killing a character that nobody knows. How am I supposed to give a shit about this character's death? How is it supposed to be meaningful, impactful? Why am I supposed to care if I've never met this character ever in game at all? Or the other comics? And this death is just used to give Anna Bray motivations that she already had. 
When we talk about literature, we often talk about characters getting put into fridges. This isn't something I necessarily have a problem with. The wife dies, the children dies, the husband dies, and this compels the character to act. This compels the main character to go on an adventure. That wasn't needed here. Anna Bray was already on her adventure. She already had her motivation. She had already faked her death to do this. So why did we have to waste so much time killing a character to give another character motivations to do the things that they were already doing? Now, yes, I know. In issue three, which is a fucking mess as well, we find out, oh, Cameron isn't actually dead. But, again, that goes to the entire point of the plotline just being pointless in general. So, first you kill a character to give a character motivations, but then you go, eh, gotcha, psych, the character's not actually dead. What was the point? What was the actual fucking point of it all? Like, if they said, oh, well, Cameron got injured, Cameron died, but this Rasputin technology might be able to help bring her back or save her life. Cool, if they stated that from the onset, I'm right there with you, but they don't. They let you think through all of issue two that she's dead, and then in issue three, they kinda just deus ex bullshit bring her back to life because reasons. They don't hint at all that bringing Cameron back is a plot point or a character motivation. Cameron's dead, so now Anna has to find Rasputin. That's it, that's all they ever say. She's just more motivated to find Rasputin. That's stupid. If there was a way to bring Cameron back that she thought was with Rasputin, then maybe, just maybe, you might have had a more compelling story if you started off with that instead of ending with that because gasp, shock. I, Mark Wade, think this is a clever plot twist. Dun, dun, dun. It's not a clever plot twist and it just makes issue two and three feel really padded out. And then to add insult to injury, Anna Sue here apparently still has access to light. Fuck that and fuck you. That is so insulting when you think about it. No, I mean, really. She gets super special awesome, I have the light again kind of powers because fuck you, I'm the main character of the comic book. I mean, we, the chosen one, has to embark on a journey to the Shard of the Traveler to get our light back, and that's to say nothing of the countless guardians who died when they lost their light. What, did they just not want to live bad enough? Did they just not dig down deep enough? as their home and everyone they ever knew and loved was being destroyed and butchered. Fuck that. Fuck this comic. Like I've said multiple times already, trying to kill Anna over and over and over when she's a vendor in your DLC makes absolutely no sense. It adds nothing of value. You could have literally had the same exact story and not had this scene. But no! I'm super special also Mary Sue, so I have to get my light back when I'm about to die. Fuck everybody else. <sighs> Fuck this comic. Fuck this comic hard. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. And like always, stay frosty.